Hello class, this is Mr. Perez. I'm going to show you a little basic things about the Emoji Project. First of all, I need to get Illustrator. So here's Illustrator. I'm going to make a new document, File, New. And I want four artboards for this document. And I'm going to use this option where it places the artboard next to each other. Artboards are like the equivalent to pages in Word. I'm going to make them six by six. I'm using inches. The orientation is irrelevant because they are six by six. And I'm gonna change the resolution. Let me see, RGB 300. I'm gonna keep it actually on 300, which is print quality. Okay, I'm gonna go okay. I'm gonna see four artboards now. Now I'm gonna focus on the first artboard and I zoom in to the size I think is reasonable. If I want to move around, I can hit the space bar, click, and with the hand tool, I can move around. There's a lot of clutter on my screen. I'm gonna get rid of this here. Okay, now I'm gonna bring an image that I made on Photoshop. I drew it by hand, took a photo, and then I actually cleaned the image on Photoshop. And I turned it into a JPEG and it's ready to be imported. So I go File, Place, and this is where you bring images in Illustrator. Use the Place option. And here in my folder, Angry Chicken to Trade, because I'm gonna make a very angry chicken. And here's the chicken. Now I need to stretch it. So I hit shift, keep it down. That way my sketch doesn't get damaged. It's important that you work with images that you trace, that you drew to trace. Uh, getting started right on the computer is hard, it's confusing. I've been drawing for many years and you waste a lot of time. This actually works better if you do this. Now it's a little hard to draw over it and to make it better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity of the image. So I click on the image, I go to the opacity options. I'm going to take it down to about a 50%. Which is, I can still see a lot of the chicken, but I'll be able to see lines over it. This is my first layer. What I'm going to do is lock it. Now I might not be able to click on it. Now I need to analyze my image. I go, well, I can have a layer, which is the head, one with the body. Okay, I can have the tail, okay, that could be, let me see, body and tail in one image, the wing might be a different layer, and the toes and the head. That will be about four layers or so, so let's see how it goes. First thing I'm gonna do is draw the head. So I make a new layer now, and I'm gonna name it head, and this way you get an idea of how this process works. So done with the head here, and I'm gonna close this menu to bring it out again. I'm gonna use the pen tool. There's several ways to draw in Illustrator. I'm just choosing this one. So I go pen tool. And if I want all the pens out, I just click this area on the screen. And I want the stroke, which is the line to be black. Okay. And I'm gonna start drawing this shape here. Every time you draw something in Illustrator, it's good the program plays the new shape on top of the previous one. So I'm gonna go from the neck, then I'm gonna go the shape of the head, the beak, the eye, and then the rest of the details. So to draw that neck, I just click here, I move my wrist just to make sure that the lines are curved. Because it's an emoji, I don't need to have like a lot of details because they're meant to be tiny little shapes on your phone. But because the phones are getting these really nice screens, you do want to have some detail, just not too much. I go back to my original point. You see how a little circle appears next to the pen tool? And I click. Now I said, you know, instead of having these flat shapes, I want to like give it a gradient. So here are my fill options. I'm going to choose for the fill, not the stroke, the fill. I'm going to choose a gradient and I click. Now I can take the gradient tool and I can click and get different effects. The longer I pull, the more options you get. And I go, you know, it's kind of cute, but it's not really the colors that I need. I mean, really a black and white chicken is not as cool as a chicken full of color. So in the gradient uh, window, <coughs> the thing shows up because this is selected. I can double click here and I can get maybe a nice little brown here. And for the lighter, I can pick 
Uh, that's kind of like too orange. I can play with them here in this option. Change the values a bit. I can warm it up. I can have all these options here. So I go, you know, that's what I want, let's say. So now I'm done with the neck. I need to have open the layer. This is the first thing. Now, because it gets on the way to draw the other stuff, I can make that layer invisible or sub layer, I should say. And that sub layer is gonna be there. It's just you're not gonna be able to see it for a moment because now I can concentrate on the head. The head kind of looks like a little sphere. And here's a little detail on the head, the little red things that you can have. You know, I'm gonna draw this one first and then I'll put the head over it. For that one, what I need is an ellipse. And I'm gonna just draw one, but I'm gonna change the gradient colors. This time I'm gonna go in the reds family. So let me go to, from that red to a lighter one. I can add also more values to this. I could put like another one here just by clicking and I can make it a little darker. Let me go down here. And now it's looking really neat. You can actually rotate this. You can go with the gradient tool and click and change, but I like the way it is. Now to make the other ones, I just hit option. I can drag them over and I can reshape. Option, click and drag. If I wanna change the particular shape of it, I can just click with the direct selection tool in one of the anchor points and I can change it. And then option again and drag. I'm gonna rotate and I'm happy with it. Okay, so now we have in the head layer, we have all the little shapes here and we have the path for the head. So now, if I want to, again, I can make this one invisible by clicking on the little eyeballs. Now I can draw the actual shape of the head, which would be something like this. I can take the white arrow, reshape. You can also change the opacity of it so you can see it better. Ooh, this is getting really sensitive. I'm gonna do undo. I'm just gonna pull the handlebars to get that shape to look more like my drawing. And I'm gonna change the values to browns or something that looks more chickeny. There's such a word. Okay, so we got that. I double I click on that one. Let me pick something a little more brown. And you know, I'm happy with it. So let's see how it's looking. I can get all those little eyeballs going. Let me see. I'm getting kind of like an emoji, it doesn't really match. I could use this gradient as well. Let me get a little more, not so yellowish. Let me go back to these values here. Okay. Now all I have to do is draw the beak. So I'm gonna draw the beak. Again, I'm gonna use the pen tool. I just like it. And I would like to see my layers. So here I go. I'm creating this beak here, close the shape. But I want to have yellows instead of browns because it's a beak after all. So I'm gonna go with this three oranges here. I'm gonna do the highlight, the darker middle tone, and a slight highlight on the bottom. I go, you know, let me zoom in, zoom tool, I can click. Okay, I got some random line that I don't need, I just delete it. I can click on the beak with the direct selection tool or the white arrow, same thing. I can close the beak a little bit. Whoa, go crazy, undo, command Z. Pull the handlebars, it's a tiny shape, so it's very sensitive. I could change the point instead of being curved. If I use the convert anchor point tool, I can make it into a straight corner. But that looks kind of ugly, so I'm gonna do it. I can add more anchor points if I want to have more control of these shapes. Let's say maybe I'm gonna put one here now. White arrow. See, white arrow, if I hit the, the A key on the keyboard, it will also bring it because it's a shortcut. And for the selection will be the B. 
Now that's looking more like a chicken. All I need now is the eyeball here. And the eyeball is gonna be, whoa, undo. I have something selected by accident. Okay, let's make the eyeball here. And the eyeball, I want it to be into the white family. No, it's too dark, so I'm gonna use grays. Uh, let me get darker gray here, lighter gray. And actually, I want this to be white. It should have been white. There we go. Beautiful. Now, that's the white part of the eye. Let's do, chickens have like a yellow eyes. They seem to be scared all the time. So the gradient, the fill, is gonna be into the blacks. I love using gradients when I'm using Illustrator. It makes just beautiful gradients. So it's kind of fun always to use them. Let me put a little purple here, just for fun. And I can move this shape here anywhere I want. I'm just clicking the black arrow. Okay, so here I'm getting somewhere with this. This line here is not really neat. It's a little messy. So I'm gonna take the white arrow, I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna move it. You see the stacking order of shapes overlap each other? These need to be moved down to match the sketch that I made. You wanna stay loyal to your sketch, because if not, it's gonna be complicated. So this is so far the basic part of this chicken. And it's an angry chicken, so now I'm gonna take my paintbrush and just a stroke, whoops, sorry. Just a stroke black, no fill. So the fill part is on top, I hit no. And instead of a uniform line, let me see. Well, I'm gonna keep it uniform. So I can draw that shape. In Illustrator, when you use the paintbrush, even if it's a little squiggly, the program cleans it and make it look smoother. So this is your basic chicken here. I just drew the head. And if you notice here, everything is on this layer. I can hide the head if I want by just clicking the outside part. The beak could be a little more curved. If I want to stick to my drawing, I will need an anchor point right there. I can add another one to create that curve. Oops, sorry. Let me click and drag so it's like a round one. And now I can like, uh, did it come out round? I can convert it by using the convert tool. That looks like a V. And there we go. That kind of looks like an eagle now. Maybe it's an eagle chicken. As you see, we can keep adding to this emoji. You want the lines to be clean, like this is not really acceptable. It looks unprofessional, so I can get rid of some points that are not very tidy. You want a nice, tidy image that looks really good. I will do the same thing for the other body parts. You know, when you trace uh, your chicken over and over. Some people prefer to use stuff like the brush. Let's say I'm doing the foot. So I'm gonna go with a yellow. Whoops, sorry. Okay, and you could go trace over it. It all depends about what you're drawing with, how good you're at that, and if you put a fill, let me select it, and I hit the fill, then you get, it's not a true close shape, but it will do that work. So it's up to you what you prefer to do. So I hope this helped with your emoji project. If you have any questions,